Hello, welcome to part two of a six part mini series. I think it might end up being uh, seven or even eight parts. I keep thinking of more things. I titled it the uh, How to Be Happy series. Um, I'll come on to why I titled that in a minute. If you're enjoying the series, um, don't forget to subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up. And uh, more importantly, give me the feedback in the comments um, you know, below, below the video. That'd be uh, really, really appreciated. More and more people are just stumbling across these videos. It's really great to see. I can sort of there's a, there's a back thing in uh, YouTube. You can see what uh, yeah, how people find us. So if you're just finding this on YouTube and sort of some stumble across it, um, I don't know who, who this guy is. Uh, I've been doing videos on YouTube now for uh, well for a few years, um, probably quite seriously for the last year or so. Uh, I'm a landlord first and foremost. Um, I guess I'm, I'm successful enough to have made all the mistakes that um, give me the experience to be able to um, impart this knowledge. Uh, I'm not perfect and uh, I'd never pretend to be, uh, but I, I think I've got a few things that I can, uh, I can help you out with. I judge success not just by the financial performance, but also by um, my happiness level. You know, How have I managed to organise things? to uh, make the business of landlording be not only profitable, but also enjoyable and um, give you the life that I guess you started out in property uh, wanting to have, you know, having the time and um, yeah, the, the freedom to do a little bit more of what you want to in life, you know. Um, I'm also the owner of ForTheLandlords.com, so I forgot to mention that a bit. You know, why are we doing these videos? Uh, I started them kind of as a blogging, vlogging thing and um, yeah, Take, take what you can of them, but I, if you're interested, and I'll put a link at the bottom, we can manage your property portfolio in this way as well, so be in touch, you know. We'll be definitely getting new, new landlord clients from me doing these videos as well. So in short, we're on a mission to make uh, landlords happy. These videos are a guide of what we do and how we do it. Um, you can take this information yourself, you can implement it yourself, or like I say, you can pick up the phone, um, email us in and we will gladly manage your property portfolio for you. So that, that's an, always an option. The more landlords, the better. Now, a title like How to Be a Happy Landlord might seem a little bit woolly, um, but make no mistake, there are some actionable points in these videos. Like I say, six part uh, mini series. Um, I want you to get as close to that, you know, I hesitate to say passive investor, I'll never be passive. Um, but have it under control so that you can sit there and say, um, yeah, it's, it's working for me. The six parts are broken down into three and three. There are three, what we call the three lines of defense. That are three things you need to focus on before a tenant moves in. And part one was the first line of defense. Today is going to be the second line of defense. Next uh, week is going to be the third line of defense. And then after that, there's three management focuses. There are only three things you need to focus on when the tenant moves into your property so that's what the video is all about like i say there'll probably be uh, one or two bonus videos after that as well because i've got some more things to say once i've written it, i thought there's a few more things to say that don't fit into those boxes so the last video was all about the first line of defense go back and watch that uh, and listen to it if you haven't already uh, and on to the second line of defense and um, yeah defense is definitely the right word um, because what we're talking about is getting the right tenant into the property and once they're in you know, they've got to go through these barriers you've got no more chance to stop them. All you can do is manage the situation you've got yourself into. So defense is the right word. And I think the second line of defense is probably the most key to having that stress-free life. Um, ultimately making more profit, let's, let's put it bluntly. When I tell you what it is, it will sound obvious, but it's not as easy to achieve as uh, it first sounds. The second line of defense is to choose and reference a great tenant, a great renter. Um, now, you only get that choice if you paid attention to first line of defense. You've got to have a decent and safe home. Otherwise, that decent tenant is not interested in your house. So um, go back and listen to video one. You'll see what I, I meant there. Um, when I first started doing things properly, probably a decade or so ago, this one thing, it's hard to put your finger on exactly what, but I think this one thing was the thing that made the difference. It's certainly you know, the, the amount of phone calls and hassle that came through the um, office on a daily basis reduced because I'd made this one choice, and that was just to put a good tenant into a property. Um, 
you're never going to know if you've got it 100% perfect. Some tenants interview well, of course, and then let you down later. That's unavoidable. But to give yourself the very, very best chance, start with somebody you think is perfect. And um, you know, in the very few occasions when they let you down, hopefully it's manageable. De definitely if we can uh, talk about the, the other management focuses we've got in there. So how do you do that? Um, it's deceptively simple. Um, but you're going to need to have tenacity and persistence and a bit of determination to, to implement it because all you do is raise the bar a bit. There's a bar, that's your tenant. I know mine was relatively low before this. And uh, you know, 10 years ago, I'd have met somebody, had a cursory look at their bank statements, uh, checked their ID, um, spoke to them, maybe did a few bits of referencing myself in terms of making phone calls, thought they're okay. They had some money, that's very tempting, isn't it? They got some cash in their hand, they gave it to me, I signed a proper AST and moved them in. And um, I certainly didn't think I was doing anything wrong, um, but it's, it's a whole lot more, more involved than that. Once you made the rule to put the, the bar up, you need to stick to it, and that's the tough part. Um, putting any old tenant, or even a tenant you've thought about a bit, um, is really, really easy. Finding the hard, uh, the, the, uh, the, the one tenant you want is hard. There's no two ways about it. Um, every uh, one of my tenants or for the landlords.com tenants has to, to for, in order them to get over that bar, they have to be working and earn a, a, enough money to um, afford the, the, the property on a referencing basis. I'll come on to that in a minute, what that actually means. It needs to have a green tick and a proper referencing companies. Um, data, data, data base, and base in their check so that you can get rent and legal insurance on it. That bar, I'll, I'll let you know right now, it's um, about £18,000 a year to afford a £550 rent, something like that. Uh, it varies, of course, but just think of those those numbers. I've seen a reference report recently and that was what it was. Um, that is higher than typical. You know, obviously, if I say you, you, you could have a housing benefit or um, you can earn £12,000 a year, that opens it up to way more people. We've raised the bar up to here to some, some a level that not many people can get over. If they can't get over it, uh, they can have a homeowning guarantor that earns enough money to cover their own bills and guarantor. Um, both parties have to have, either a tenant or a guarantor, have to have good credit. Um, you know, no CG, CCJs or anything like that. Certainly not a big one recently. You know, there might be you know, a, a small one a long time ago satisfied. That always happens sometimes, you know, as long as there's a good reason for it. Um, and if they don't pass those tests, um, you say no, move on. And I'll let you know, this. here's the hard part. Only, only approximately one in 20 people are good enough. So raising the bar will definitely cause you some challenges. It's a really simple thing to do. One. I'm going to have a good tenant. Two, raise the bar. Dead easy. The challenging bit is saying no to the 19 very tempting people when you've got a void and the house is empty and going through it. There are things you can do uh, to make the task as easy as possible. First, have a decent and safe home. That's the first line of defence so that more good tenants are attracted to your house. If you've got a reasonably crappy looking house and you want that bar up very high, well good luck to you because those tenants have got a choice of other things. It works two ways. You've raised the bar but they're quite demanding too. Um, so you've got to have a decent safe home. Then you'll need to make sure your advertising is spot on. You need to get it out in lots of different portals and um, make sure you get the very best choice so you're not left scrabbling around and you know, the bottom of the barrel scenario. Um, and that's you know, it, relatively easy to do these days. You, you put it out there. One of the hardest things we find actually is answering the, the phones. You know, we've got I don't know, 200, 300 leads coming in every single day. It's getting through them. That's, that's actually the challenge when you get your marketing right. Nice challenge to have. Then the only other thing you can do is the hard graft of getting through the work and getting through it as quickly as possible. Having a set list of questions to knock out those, you know, as, as many as you can, one in two almost, um, on the phone so you don't even bother going to show the viewing or um, once they've done the viewing they like it, you take as many documents as you can up front. Basically trying to get through that workload as quick as you can to avoid the void. The void kills everything, but what will kill things even more is having a tenant, a bad tenant sat in your house for six months plus not paying the rent. So let's avoid that above anything else. Um, you will definitely find it easier. And I, I kind of picked on this because it's a, something that's fresh in my mind. 
landlords walk into our office and tell them, bemoan their, their, their woeful tales regularly. And um, you, you'll find it definitely find it easier than yeah, finding your own tenant. Yeah. Um, putting the daughter of your mate you met down the pub um, and her new boyfriend into the house. Yeah, it was a ridiculously easy option. He's my mate. I know him. He's not going to let me down. And um, yeah, this is just easy and there's cash. I don't really yeah, move in. And um, yeah. Wait, and knew it went wrong when didn't quite know the surname of the person involved on the on the boyfriend side, or you know, it, it's a woeful tale. I won't, I won't go into it now, but it seems like the easy option, that kind of thing, not that very specific bit there, but you know what I mean, that that kind of thing where it's just somebody very close to you, somebody that seems nice and friendly, quite you know, that, that's a very very typical landlord scenario. I've got one or two houses, and I just want to you know fill it. It's easy, and I go through all that hassle my mate over there just put them in and uh, well, i can tell you over, over half of all of the cases um maybe about half maybe not over half about half 50 60 percent have some element of that in them when the landlord comes to us and says it's all gone horribly wrong so my advice is don't that kind of over familiar setup is you know, just don't do it um but by the way if you have got problems you, you could be one of those landlords that walks into our office has some problems with it with maintenance arrears tenants uh, paperwork whatever it is we take on properties or portfolios whole portfolios and, um, and and fix them up so if you've got those kind of problems don't put up with them come in and see us we'll check them check everything out tell you very quickly and easily how we're going to optimize it we can get it done in you know, two or three days or two or three months or whatever the plan's going to be and off we go and get it done for you um we uh, took a portfolio on the other day with yeah, many thousands of pounds worth of arrears and got it squished down to under two thousand pounds worth of arrears. That's like 85, 90% of what, we, what the arrears was uh, in about two weeks. So that, that money could be in your pocket. Give us a call, okay? Um, a pet hate of mine, and uh, I think I wrote down two pet hates here, is, is letting agencies say, we do in-house referencing. Because it sounds really thorough and thoughtful and personal. And um, definitely, we, we do some in-house referencing. There should be some bit of it, but quite often when they're talking about this, they're actually saying, we don't do any external referencing. Um, and you really must. You know, if, if there isn't a piece of paper that comes from a reputable company that either offer rent and legal insurance, or you can take that piece of paper to a company that does offer rent and legal insurance, it's really quite nice when the piece of paper is interchangeable and you can go to any insurer, well, then it's not referencing. If you haven't got a piece of paper that you can insure against, that isn't referencing. So we make sure that bar that I'm talking about, make sure you get you get one of those pieces of paper. 19 out of 20 tenants would not pass that. So that tells you how often landlords are getting it wrong. Um, another pet hate of mine, I, I, I did write down two pet hates. Um, let, letting agencies who say um, tenants waiting. Landlords wanted tenants waiting, the latest piece of advertising in the world. And it stays, it stays in their window for you know, years on end. Um, we guarantee to let your, this is the pet hate particularly, I mean, you know, it's odd how you do your advertising, do that how you want, but the pet hate is this. We guarantee to let your property in 24 hours or 48 hours, any time limited bit, or we'll let it for free. I want you as a landlord to think about what that really means, because I can tell you now, I won't get the referencing um, paperwork back for 24 or 48 hours. Um, impossible, you know, sometimes it takes a week, and if they fall out, as in I, I get the referencing paperwork back and it's no good, they go back and we start all over again. And yes, it might take two or three weeks, but I'm not putting a bad tenant in because once they're in, bloody hard to get them out. Um, so what they're really saying, that other letting agency is, I'll put any old crap in here within 24 hours because nowhere on earth am I not charging you any fees. That's what they're basically saying. Don't fall for that trick. Um, if you want to know a bit more about our method methodology, um, you know, ask exactly what we do, uh, your chance to get um, questions answered, book onto a discovery call. There'll be a link in the um, video description. Book onto a discovery call. It's a, it's a no obligation. There's, there's a few people on the on the call. It's a Zoom call. So it's one of those situations where you can get all your questions answered or hide in the background. It's equally, uh, equally okay to do both. No obligation, like I say book onto a discovery call if you're sort of thinking, oh, I've got some more questions there. Um, or put the question in the um, bit underneath the video here. If you want us to show you how we can take your underperforming, slightly hasslesome property portfolio, make it all singing, dan all, set, all dancing, reduce the, the hassle down, bring the profits up, also book onto a discovery call and then we'll put a, put a plan together for you as well. Uh, I always enjoy the moment where we tell landlords to buy a new, new mobile phone. You know, get, get rid of your old mobile phone, delete all the tenant contacts, they're never calling you again. 
get rid of that hassle. We will take care of it all inside a system, inside a process. Um, everything free, no obligation. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and look out for the next video. Video number, I think that'll be three, won't it? All right, see you there. Bye now.